All right, I considered it wise to get a little extra light for this step to help show you a couple of different aspects. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna just do a little bit of modification on the face. And I also wanted to show you how some of the paper clay turned out with the smoothing and without. I thought that would be impossible to see if there wasn't enough light on it. Hopefully this big arse heat lamp blasting me in the face won't cause me to break out in too much of a horrid sweat, which would be all gross and disgusting on film there. But uh, let's take a quick look first at the paper clay. So, this paper clay here has been smoothed. This is a bit I went over with the brush and it's been smoothed down. It's really nice. If you, for any reason, don't like it, that is some wet stuff because I just made more paper clay. If for any reason you don't like it, take some sandpaper to it. It will smooth down, no problem whatsoever. By contrast, this over here has not been smoothed. This is just me mashing paper clay down, letting it dry. I'm gonna move it a little bit closer and see if this can pick up any more contrast. So smooth. Mushed. Hopefully you can see the mushed side is just a lot more bumpy up and down. What I wanted to do today is something I saw done by Mr. Scott Stahl from the Stalloween website and it has always served me very well in pumpkins. It is not a necessary step though whatsoever. You do not have to do it if you don't want to. What I'm going to do with this is I'm just going to bulk up a little bit some areas that I anticipate will have a lot of paper clay behind them. I want to add a little bit more definition by this step. What you need for this is a little bit of cracker box, spaghetti box, anything like that. And we're going to cut it into some strips. Just want some thin strips, maybe three quarter inch, half inch wide. And while you do this, you want to have your hot glue gun warming up. Now, we're going to be applying paper clay to the face. So what we'll want to do is anticipate those areas where it's going to really bulk up. And we want to try to, try to provide a flat to add some depth to this entire structure. I know that I like to have large, deep-set eyebrows. So when you scowl, your eyes come down and they make a more menacing look. Since I know I'm going to have that, rather than having a rounded bulb here, I just want to throw in a little bit of a backing so that when that bulb starts to get in place, I'll have something there to help bolster it up. So I've just kind of felt out where this is going to be and then I'm going to hot glue this strip in place. Does it have to be absolutely precise? No, not at all. You can always cut and maneuver as you like. Any area where you anticipate a bulb of paper clay that's going to come out and give your sculpture some added texture, some added facial three-dimensional appearance, it's good to hand these things in. I'm going to put two at the base of the nose. I'm going to put another one around the top eyebrow here. And another spot I recommend is the corners of the mouth. And all you're going to do is just take that strip and hot glue it in place. I'm actually going to grab some paper clay in a moment and show you exactly how this works out. Any areas that don't quite work out the way you want, they're coming out, they're too pointed, don't spend a ton of time heavily sculpting it, but you can trim it all down. So when I have a big wad of paper clay, there we go, when I have a big wad of paper clay sitting on this top area, a lot of it's going to be sitting right on top of this strip, and this strip is going to give it a little bit of added definition. You can also take the strip more inside if you're worried that your sculpture is going to 
not have that I'm a full pumpkin kind of look. And you can paint it yellow to be the inside section of the pumpkin if you want to keep an orange skin and a yellow inside. So you can set it back, you can move it front, play with it, have some fun. But it's a great technique for adding the little bit of a catch to areas that you plan on bulking up. Ah yes, the other thing. If you have pointy nasty teeth, they have a habit, because it's paper mache, of splaying out. Hopefully you can see this tooth here has got some frilly play to it. I don't really want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run a bead of hot glue alongside both edges of it and keep this from fanning out anymore with any moisture uptake, anything like that. Eventually there'll be a layer of paper clay covering the entire tooth, but because I don't want it flaying out any more than it has to, I've just kind of sealed the sides with hot glue so they don't go anywhere. And I'll do the same for several of these others so they don't just end up fanning out at any point in the process. Good tip to do if you've got bits in your mouth or any other area where you're worried about it separating out too much. All right, I'm gonna do the rest of the work on this face and show you when I'm done, because otherwise it'll take forever. Or, or I'll do it in fast motion. That way I can see this thing getting built 100% all the way through. That sounds like more fun. I've dressed my face and I've put fillings on all my teeth. And the more astute of you are going to think, these sharp edges are going to look frickin' horrible. You're right. So we cut them off so they're smoothed down. Anything your scissors won't get, I guarantee your exacto will. If you don't like a seam, don't be afraid to take your glue gun and go back over it on the outside and or inside. That's a lot more secure now. If the cuts are rough, don't worry about it. If it seems in any way not particularly smooth enough to your liking, do not sweat it. We are not quite near the final product yet, and everything you don't like will be masked. If you are not going for the mottled look, and you want a nice smooth surface to your pumpkin, do take good care with this step if you do it, because you will see these flat edges on your pumpkin when the final bit is done. They might be covered with a very thin layer of paper clay. They might not be, depending on how you do it. In the end, if you are a vicious perfectionist, do remember that most of the folks on Halloween night will be glancing at this for about two tenths of a second going, ooh, spooky, and moving on. So do it for your own fun. All right. Yeah. All right, I'm going to give my paper clay that I made earlier a little bit more time to chill, and then I'm going to get back and I'm going to start doing the rest of this magnificent piece of pumpkin. Hopefully yours will be magnificent too. I will see you on that flip side. All right, I hope my paper clay is dried enough. I'm just going to keep working with it for a little bit because I really want to have a complete time lapse of this thing all the way through. So just some more work on the pumpkin. A further reminder, I'm going to be making a modeled surface on this pumpkin. So if you are not, you want to be brushing it with your paper mache paste to keep it as smooth as possible throughout. Whenever you have wet paper clay, give it a brush down with the paste. 
assuming you want the smooth surface and not the crazy creepy mottled surface. Hey, no judgments. Paper clay is arguably the most fun part because it gives you the most control over your project. You can bulk up any area. You can make it as thin as you want all the way back down to the mache underlayer. But it gives you supreme, supreme sculpting control with a very easy to work medium. Now here's one of those plastic pieces. Pull those guys out. There we go. And once I have the face fairly reinforced, at that point I will pull the stuffing out. When you pull the stuffing out, another thing that you will be doing is you'll be able to expose the inside of this to air as well. Some of this mache, even though it might seem perfectly dry, still has a certain amount of moisture in it. And as soon as we pull the stuffing on the, from the inside, it's going to get drying from both sides. Here you can see how that edging helps to really just add a bulk point for things to slope in and behave smoothly. That's how the etching works. You can of course go beyond the level of edging without any problems whatsoever. It's just a nice little bulwark to start with. When connecting uh, pre-dried paper clay to newly moist and mushy paper clay, just smudge the new malleable stuff right over the old stuff. It will sink right in and on. I am not going for fine detail right now. All I am trying to do is get paper clay in and around the major sections and support of the upper jaw here. I want this stuff to get in there, I want it to harden, and I want it to add an extra layer of structure to the overall project. That way when I pull the stuffing out, it's going to be a lot more firm and I'm not going to have to worry at all about any kind of sag because I'm going to have a pre-hardened layer of paper clay right there holding the whole shindig together. I probably could pull the stuffing out with no real massive consequence, but I want to make sure this project looks good. Alright, there is the base mask all the way up and around. I'm going to let this harden, throw a fan on it, and then next time I am going to pull the stuffing right out of this sucker and get to work proper.